I wish good things to you who's watching this. I am Alexi and today we're going to analyze an absolute classic of a game that everybody who wants to learn and improve their Carcassonne game uh, should study. The game is back from 2021 from the World Team Carcassonne Online Championship group stage where the defending world champion Team Japan are facing the United Kingdom and uh, we're going to look at the pairing Dan Chard with a screen name Dan is 30. As many of you know this is the author or as he likes to insist one of the co-authors uh, of the Book of Carcassonne and uh, one of the best players in Japan and pretty much one of the highest rated players in the platform also won an arena season at least once maybe twice at least once for sure in 2020 uh, with the screen name Keithra and their their real name is going to remain a mystery so they get to start oh yeah and the reason why I chose this game is at first I wanted to make a puzzle video out of this because they're going to be a very specific subtle moment that when i will ask you to pause the video but then upon preparing the puzzle video i went through the game again and then just realized that there are several interesting moments that are worth discussing so i decided to make a full game analysis video instead however i've stamped time stamped all the moments where you're going to be asked to pause the video so if you want to treat this as a puzzle video and just navigate through the timestamps go ahead uh yeah or do whatever you want now interesting the game starts with probably what i'm assume is a misclick um because uh always pretty much you people here on the road uh and blue just kind of left this tile alone because black um now can take this and then meeple three points and already like black has an opening advantage they have a four point city three point road the city is quite threatening uh if they get one more tile like a triangle then the city is no longer attackable so already blue has to do some grinding grinding then this is a really really nice way of continuing the city uh that black does i won't go into much detail um but the idea is that it continues the city in such a way that makes it more difficult to attack because here now blue has to face a dilemma so black is three triangles away from completing a city it's still three tile so i think if i were uh if i were blue uh i would just go over here And then start a new city then create some vulnerable squares actually many squares uh, but blue started connecting from here and this move i'm i'm not a fan of because of happens because of what happens later so first of all black can always reconnect here and second three of these tiles that blue wait a second i know what i'm gonna do tile counter well the, that's the not the counter but the script for analyzing games uh from here you can see that one one three so five tiles oh you can even see the little five it's kind of bleak but you can totally see it so there are five tiles that fit over here which seems like a lot but then it will take um it will take some time for blue to connect over here but also there will be some vulnerability for this square because check this out so black takes two points which is uh, but it's also a tempo move because in addition to these two points black creates a threat to this square and if let's say black sticks in a curve in there well then there's only one tile left that fits here if black let's say if black gets something like this and puts this over here yeah i mean now it's blue's turn but imagine that if that this were black then there would be only one tile that, re that remains here so now blue is forced to save that square 
and then they have to uh, make a move which is somewhat somewhat optimal because ideally they would be wanting to starting this city yes but they would want to do it over here adding one more point to the to their road and so they're forced to create a kind of a couple of dangling road into nothingness and there we go on the next move black gets three points for this road which was created by blue pretty much so it seems like it's not such a big deal but it is because already black is at plus five they still have the uh upper hand in in this mini battle even though it's now going to equalize with an 88 percent chance because there are three tiles that fit here and this is not going to be blocked So blue gets of harm's way, finishes their city. They're still like black has only a slight advantage, especially now because blue gets a very nice five point monastery and black gets a tile which they really can't play. So they just dump it here to the joint city. That was pretty much the only option. And look at that black getting, oh, blue getting one more monastery point and preparing to finish a, a road. Now black is not finishing their city. Even though uh, it could be mandated, just so that they could attack, uh, just so that they could attack this vulnerable square over here. But uh, this is an opening principle that many strong players, well, pretty much most master players follow, is the principle of two cities. You want to keep two cities open in the opening when you have enough meeples because that way you can build them up more efficiently i've said this many times before as but if let's say if you're first time for this channel uh, i recommend that you watch my video of analyzing the final of the japanese national championship i'm reacting to live footage there and you can see how the players very often don't finish their city but start a second a third city because it's much easier to continue a city than to start a new city they're simply um more suitable styles that way um yeah so blue of course gets the road start to new city and now um Black starts a monastery, of course, to control the blue meeple, n blue meeple next to this square. And now I think blue makes a slight misstep here. So move that you can consider would be just like starting a new city somewhere here, maybe. Yeah, actually, this is not bad. Um, also, this I think is pretty good. This is, well, there is an issue that this square is blockable, but then again, it's... Uh, a mini battle that you that you can live with and also it restricts the city somewhat and so if this gets blocked this could get blocked blue does this which is a fine move in principle but then ideally when you play, make such a play you want to delay putting a tile in the shared square as much as possible because here what happens now black attacks blue city and as a result all blue did was just add one point to uh, to black's monastery uh yeah but but he that's just to show you that blue was in a tricky situation in the first place so actually this idea of controlling uh, your opponent's city with a monastery is already quite powerful And so now blue tries to remedy the situation and rightfully so they're trying to create an attacking spot to do something with the city because you see uh black is threatening to just snatch off this entire piece like with a triple city and a triangle later and this will be worth i don't know at least some 14 points so it's a serious threat that one would need to contend with black just builds up the monastery and here comes the first, it's not the pause the video moment, it's just a precursor to the pause the video moment. And there's this straight line, very inconspicuous tile, but something interesting happens. So first of all, do pause the video, just think what you would do with this straight line. I'm gonna start talking again in three, two, one. Assuming that you pause the video, there are pl plenty of options, it's not like there's one correct move. I mean, you can go, um, you could start a three-point road, 
and uh, you can continue your monastery here. Probably I like this because it's efficient and it basically completes your monastery because uh, when you have um, your opponent sharing squared squares with your opponent's monastery, you can regard your monastery as completed when you've covered all the squares which are not shared. Because then, after you've placed the straight line over here, it doesn't matter what happens. If you get a curve, well, you get a meeple back. If you don't get a curve, well, nobody gets a meeple back. So at least you've kind of secured your part. And now it's a, a, your opponent's job to go here and to go here. Blue goes here. The problem with this move... Well, there is no problem with this move because it just doesn't do much. I guess the idea is uh, to start blocking the square, but it's just too slow. Because in order to start blocking this square, uh, blue would need something like this, something like um, a triangle with a road. But then blue needs the same tile uh, here as well to start and fight for the city. That's kind of what blue created this attacking spot for. So it's trying to, I think, achieve too many objectives at once. And yes, it's only a question of one point, but you'll see. Black just casually continues with his monastery, sort of going to build up the shared squares. Uh, then blue, of course, starts to attacking, starts attacking the shared city, eventually creating another threat. Yes, you could say that it's a bit problematic that blue needs the same tile here and here, but there is um, a sufficient number of tiles, as you can see, four tiles, and this amounts to a... 69% or like 11 over 16 to be exact chance that blue in fact does get these tiles. So uh, what um, does black do here? Uh, well, black would very much want to at some point uh, connect to the city or do something about it. In fact, what Black would very much want is to get a city splitter and place it uh, over here to make sure that Black does get a meeple back, but Blue does not get a meeple back. Black just does the job of building up their monastery and now Black's monastery is pretty much complete. And in fact, Black is threatening to grab a second monastery and then meeple it basically being one full monastery ahead over their opponent. Remember, I've told many times you want to finish mon a monastery with another monastery. Black, of course, takes three points. Also, in a way that connects them to the roads. I meant blue. Uh, now black keeps continuing their city. And now comes, I think, a misstep from blue. Because uh, if, if I were blue, I would do this. I would place the tile over here and I would meeple the city cap. Well, you know, it's not a good idea. It's not a bad idea to start a city. And also it would quite significantly restrict the options for uh, this square. Most importantly, it would take away the city splitter uh, that I mentioned earlier. Because that dreaded option, which would basically... Uh, block this entire construction for blue. But instead, blue starts a city over here. And uh, the problem with this move, it's not a bad move. The problem with this move is just, this is not that other move, which I suggested. It was kind of important to do that. But there is actually another problem is that this square is more vulnerable. Like for example, let's say black could get a crossroads. And then they could place the crossroads over here, and that way uh, start attacking this ruin. So it's so it's just more vulnerable. And we're back. I don't know. Board game arena was glitching again. Blue just placed a meeple on their city cap, and black now has a straight line. And believe it or not, this inconspicuous looking straight line is one of the main reasons for uh, this video. Um, there is in fact a, a strong move, a really strong move that black can play. So pause the video and 
I'm going to explain the move after. If you went for this move, kind of placing the straight line on the left, harassing Blue City, that's completely okay. But there's something stronger. And then they placed this tile over here. Well, why? Well, it's, it's kind of obvious why, because it sort of like bothers this square a little bit. Not by much, because you see there's still like 11 tiles that fit here. So it's, so it's barely bothering it, but... It doesn't accomplish, but it sets up for a strong move later on. Reason one, Black's monastery is pre-completed. So Black is ready, is actually quite threatening to take a monastery, a meeple that, get a meeple back, and then have already a pre-completed monastery. So in fact, what Black is doing, Black is pre-building a monastery that he possibly is going to have in the future. The situation is not symmetrical. If Blue gets a monastery, they place it over here, they probably have to meeple it, but they don't get a meeple black. Black gets a meeple back, and now Blue has two, zero, two meeples. Uh, no, Blue, Blue has zero meeples in hand. Black has two meeples in hand. And Black even has an option to start and blocking these two new monasteries. So uh, this is, at the same time, pre-building a monastery for yourself or pre-blocking a monastery for Blue. But that's not all. A monastery is not the only tile that, go, that can go here. What happens if blue gets a city cap? Then blue finishes a monastery with a city cap. And then this square would be completely blocked because there are, in fact, no longer tiles remaining that fit here. And this is the concept of a pre-block that's very important. Depending on the run out of tiles, you can create a situation which facilitates you to make a block in the future. And that's why I find this a such a high level move. And also the beauty of it is that Blue had a chance to remedy the situation because Blue had the exact, exact same, same tile, uh, the straight line that they could have placed over here to pre-complete the monastery. Uh, but instead they did something different, but Black with the same tile managed to find a more productive move. And the results of that you'll see a few moves down the line. Uh, so Blue continues their city and Black manages to equalize this situation because of course Blue was threatening to complete this spot. Yes, it is unfortunate for Black slightly that they're losing this mini battle because Black has one, two, three points over here blocked forever. See this big fat bleak zero. And blue has one, two, three, four. So kind of blue has plus one point in that area. But what has to be done has to be done. Now, interesting choice for blue. Blue goes over here and doesn't place a meeple. And actually here, I think placing a meeple is not the worst idea. Because you can connect through one of these 13 tiles that fit here and then through one of the three tiles that fit here, and then have a decent sized ruin that will still have some equity to be completed because yes, you need the same tile over here and here, but the chances of getting two out of three tiles of the same type are exactly 50%. I think uh, Blue didn't want to risk their last meeple, so they kind of just wanted to close down the area and they didn't have many places to place the triangle. Well, an, an alternative would be to place the triangle kind of down here to, to try and start a block. But I, I would probably place the meeple over here because blue still has some places where they can get a meeple back here through a curve uh, or here through a city cap. Black takes two points, har uh, starts harassing Black's uh, uh, white <laughs> blues <laughs> city blue connects a comp goal accomplished. Black starts blocking. Blue gets the tile. There were plenty of those remaining still.
Black continues their city, well, or and starts a new one, getting more quick points from the city caps. Blue creates a blocking platform for the city. And now, look at this. Th this move finally pays off. Black finishes their monastery, gets a meeple back, and this square was now was pre-blocked like five or ten of however many moves ago. And so and you had to see that far ahead back then. And the thing you could say, oh, maybe like Black got kind of lucky that they got one of the two remaining city caps before any other player got the monastery. Yeah, sure. But the idea that this move actually created a favorable outcome for pretty much every single tile that you can get. This one was just the most spectacular one. You do the pre-block first, you finish this, and then you end up with actually quite a big advantage because first of all, Black got nine points and a meeple back from this situation. And um, Blue got eight points and no meeple back. So it's one point plus a meeple. Well, one point is obviously not uh, a lot, but a clean meeple? Well, how much a meeple is worth? It's a good question. Because a meeple has, depending on the game, some amount of point that it is worth. And I would say that it is worth at least as the biggest feature available on your final move. So, for example, I would say that in this position... Uh, an extra meeple is worth like seven points or so because on your last move you can maybe take this seven point road and uh, you can't take this road during the game because otherwise you, you won't have enough meeples. In very open positions, meeples are extremely valuable. So let's say if there is just like one big field for, I don't know, 27 points. Well, then the extra meeple is worth pretty much 27 points. So then you can't afford your meeples having blocked elsewhere. Now, if, if, if the position is super closed, then maybe there are tiny fields of two points of two cities worth six points each. Then an extra meeple is worth six points. And then maybe that's not that much and actually that a meeple's advantage is not decisive. So that's why in situations where you get a spare meeple, a good strategy, long-term strategy, is to try to create a big field because you're likely to win this field because you have more meeples. Or a big field or a bi big ruin, something like a, a big feature worth fighting for. Typically, fields are the go-to situation. Uh, so, black... Oh, blue now drops a farmer, which seems to me like a reasonable farm. However, I would have done this with a different tile because blue had already set up this block and you're getting a city tile, you might as well you might as well continue with it and then do this later with a curve. And it's not like it's a huge, super huge field that's going to be difficult to fight back for because look at that, that's a six-point field, there's another six-point field. Black now gets a point. Blue now takes advantage of the pre-block, starts a new city, and also starts an attack on Black City. Here comes the block. And here comes another blocking attempt in response. So even though these are not full blocks, it's actually important to do stuff like this because you restrict uh, your opponent's movement and... Um, well, first of all, if you're lucky enough, you can build around and make sure that your opponent never gets a meeple back. But even if they do get a meeple back, they only have one in hand. It could take them, I don't know, like 10 moves to get their meeple back. And you can already benefit from the meeple advantage during that time. So even doing these partial block, uh, blocks as a delay is a pretty big deal. Especially when it doesn't cost you anything because it's a low value tile that you're doing this with. Yeah, look at that, just dropping the city cap, trying to block, but blue gets the tile and the three-point road. As blue got their meeple back, now the situation already looks close to equal. 
So I would say black still has the advantage because of their sp spare meeple, but uh, the trapped meeples for blue are reasonably well deployed. They have plus one in this mini battle, they have eight for the monastery, and they have a field which is pretty much all right. It's probably going to grow, and in fact, uh, it's like black is probably well going to end up fighting for it. But now comes the second pause the video moment. Uh, key points in the game. I think for those of you who are experienced players, you will kind of recognize this move uh, um, quite easily. But for those of you who are maybe like intermediate players, you're going to need to find this move. So, Black has a city splitter. What do you do? I'm going to tell you the answer in 3, 2, 1. Actually, before doing so, let me just turn on again the Carcassonne reviewer just so that you can estimate the number of tiles remaining. So you see there's still two tiles that left over here in this hole and yes uh, you know exactly what I'm thinking. Over here and Meeple. Now you might say it's risky. Yes it is. Intermediate players typically don't like doing stuff like this because they're hoping only for two tiles. But what do you mean only for two tiles? That amounts to a 75% chance. Sometimes in a good position, you probably want to get more than 75% because you know, you're a meeple ahead and you are doing very well. But the thing is, black is thinking in terms of win probabilities. The ruin is so huge that it's almost certainly is going to decide the game. If black does get one of the two tiles, then black almost certainly wins the game because this city could even get finished. Even as a ruin, it will be worth 13 points. And as a completed city, if that gets completed, and there's a reasonable chance of that because there's only one tile remaining to close the system off entirely, that'll be worth... Uh, 28 points and that's pretty much impossible to come back to. So with this move, probably black has like 75% in the game, maybe 70% in the game. But then if he doesn't get the tile, he can still fight in an equal game because he's committing a meeple, now they're equal. He can still fight and just try to win by a few points like normally. So in fact, He's sort of committing to a win probability of, I don't know, let's say 80%, something like this, maybe a little bit more. And it's already reaped some fruit. So you see the next tile that blue has, blue would just like to do something like this, but they're forced to fight for the city. And now already they're equal in meeples, now a black is black to two on one uh, meeple advantage. And look at that, they get to score two points and even create a vulnerable square. So blue, of course, has to save that spot and miraculously now... <laughs> oh, black gets a city splitter and splits off the blue. And that's it, like the 75% win is completely locked because I, I think if, if blue... If black gets one of these two tiles remaining, it yeah, it will be impossible to come back to. Well, maybe there are some ways, but yeah, not really. So the players will be now fighting for the remaining 25% of ex equity in this game. Kind of both playing with the assumption that black does not get one of these two tiles. This is a slight misstep here from blue. It's trying to block the city which of course is okay, but there are two tiles remaining. If uh, blue were to turn this tile the other way, uh, like with the curve facing to the right, then there would be, as you can see on the left, only one tile remaining. And so that amounts to a difference of 25% of whether black will actually manage to complete the city. Uh, but I need to add, this was 2021. So this was played still with the old, with a fast time control. And uh, as far as I remember, both layers were pretty low on time. And this is the intuitive move. 
which is correct most of the time, but just for this particular run out of tiles, the counterintuitive move of turning it to the right was actually more precise. Now black tries to break blue city because it's quite a threat for blue to complete the city. Now this is a situation where you want to have meeples. Look at that, 9 point field, 8 point monastery, it's just points galore. But of course you can't do this with your last meeple, so blue starts a blocking attack. And now black takes the field. Blue takes two points. Now black indirectly protects his city. It, it, it does take away a significant number of blocking tiles. Blue gets a city cap. Uh, l look at that move, trying to find value still. So this is the blocking of a blocking square. What this does is this makes sure that there is absolutely no way for these people to get blocked now. There's still two tiles that fit here and that's gonna be it. Because if blue places a curve over here, then this hole will still be fillable with the same tile. This is very often interesting in, in closed positions where both opponents have many blocked meeples and fewer actionable moves. It's a common thing to see in master games that like players would build around and first of all try to attempt the block, then block the blocking square and sometimes even block the blocking square for the blocking square instead of fighting for the extra like couple percentage points of equity. Blue creates a big threat of completing the city, and uh, so of course he recognizes that. Tries to create more squares uh, for blocking, and now both opponents don't get too many tiles. Well, now finally, uh, he pretty much managed to block the city because, yes, there are still two tiles that fit in that square, but neither of these tiles are city caps. And... Uh, here we can see how blue got one of the tiles that black needed. Blue managed to take these crucial four points. And black managed to take these crucial four points and a meeple black. Now at that point, blue takes eight points for the monastery at the cost of expanding Black's field, but at that point, Blue pretty much had calculated that this would be sufficient for them to win. Sorry for the spoiler. Well, um, you'll see in a second. Black gets six points for here. And four points for here. And even though Black kind of gets all the good tiles in the right order, and even gets this seven point road with uh, the extra meeple, the kind of, that sort of the value of, of the one meeple that we're talking about. Because blue got these two tiles that fit here, they had just barely enough to win. I'm going to let the points calculate themselves slowly and then we're gonna make a summary of the game. So blue ended up winning uh, with three points in an absolute nail biter. Given that black lost, you might question some of black's earlier moves. So for example, when black was trying to complete the city and fight for the city, was that justified or not? And some players would possibly say no. I would say yes, and here's why. First of all, just because black lost, that would be results-oriented thinking. You still gotta evaluate whether the decision is actually correct and 
correct, it means you gives you the greatest win probability pretty much. The problem is that not always the, the win probability is clear, but one of the reasons why I wanted to show this game is that here the win probability was pretty clear. So you have this huge feature for 75%. Um, if black gets it, well then black probably wins. If black doesn't get it, then it's an even game. Because you see black lost with only three points, which meant like it was like super tight until the end of the game. So um, any flip would do pretty much. So like blue got these four points for the road. Let's say had black gotten these four points for the road instead, then maybe black could have won. And also, here's another thing to think about. In order for blue to win, blue had to draw both of these tiles. But these are the tiles that black needs, but blue doesn't need. So actually, blue was kind of forced to dump them over here. So when blue drew black's tiles, he was forced to basically skip moves, thus making it a bit more likely that black would draw more actionable tiles on their turn instead. But what I like about this game, what makes it so high level, is that after this situation was established, after, you know, this um, divider was put over here and this huge city was pre-built that never went into fruition, both players recognized the situation of the game pretty well. The idea being, okay, now black has 75% of the equity and let's fight for the other 25%. Blue also recognized that pretty well. They were playing with the assumption that they've lost 75% of the game, there's nothing that they can do about it, so they might as well and make sure that they get as close to 25% of the win probability as possible. As for Black, even that fateful city move aside, they ended up playing really well so especially i like the idea of the monastery pre-block that's uh helped them with the advantage and a few of opening subtleties that we touched and now all there's left to do is to remind you to meeple the like button because it's important for the algorithm especially subscribing is important if you want to see this content more than once thank you so much for watching and i'm gonna see you soon